they might not say anything. They might just work and work and work. So if we try to do this trick with Turing machines, we have this immediate problem that we can't fill this table in necessarily. If I run it on itself, what if it just runs and runs? I don't even know whether to put a 0 or 1 in there. So you, you might think, oh, well, great. You know, I can't even make this table, so maybe I won't have this contradiction. Well, that's fine, but nobody's satisfied with that. So here's the subtlety to get around it. We're going to assume, and it's not a reasonable assumption, but we're going to prove that it's not a reasonable assumption as we go. We're going to assume, perhaps unreasonably, that there is a way for us to put in zeros and ones here. And how are we going to assume that? By assuming that there's some program somewhere where if I give it a Turing machine and I give it an input, it tells me whether that Turing machine accepts that input. I've got a magic halting machine tester. So here's my magic, magic halting algorithm. I'm assuming it exists. It doesn't really. Okay, but I'm assuming it exists, and in continuing here, I'm going to get a contradiction which will imply that this assumption is completely erroneous. But I can't prove that it's erroneous until I actually make the assumption and get you some weird contradiction. The weird contradiction is going to be the barber. And then I'm going to back up, and the only assumption I will have made that's, that's questionable will be this one, that this exists. So let me tell you what this is that exists. The magic halting algorithm. I give it a Turing machine and a string. I give it a Turing machine and a string. It tells me it outputs does m accept x. It tells me yes or no, does m accept x? If it tells me yes, I know the answer is yes, it accepts x. If it tells me no, I know that either it rejects it or it infinite loops. I don't care which one, I know it doesn't accept it. It's going to tell me yes or no if I give it an m and an x. And if I got something like this, then I can fill in this table. Keep in mind that we did have something like this for finite state machines. There, it's not magic. There is a halting algorithm for finite state machines. You can write it yourself. Put in a finite state machine, M. Does M accept a string X? Yeah, go check. It's just that we don't have that necessarily for programs. Nobody knows how to do it. So let's assume we do have it. I'm going to show you we got a weird contradiction. So let's fill this table in. It's got zeros and ones just like before. All right, so there's a few entries. I just made them up. Representing whether Turing machine labeled this number accepts a string labeled this number. You can also see if these machines accept themselves. 0, 0 accepts itself. 1 accepts itself. 2 accepts itself. Oh, they all accept themselves. All right. There's one that doesn't accept itself. <laughs> well, fine. All right, now I can fill this table in. And just like before, just like before, I am now going to come up with a, uh, with a set that can't possibly exist. And what is that set? I know I've made an assumption in order to do this. We'll go back and fix that assumption in a minute. But what's the set that can exist, assuming I have this diagram? The set of all things with zeros in the diagonal, or the set of all Turing machines that do not accept themselves. That means either they reject themselves or they infinite loop. That's a set that doesn't exist. Just like it didn't in the other two cases, just like the barber didn't exist. Yeah, Joe. How do you know that the input zero, right, string length zero, is the same string that's generated by the Turing machine zero when you encode it? Right? That's how you know it doesn't accept itself because that string zero has to be the encoding of the Turing machine zero so that they match up and give you either a one or a zero in that diagonalization. Is that right? Um, I'm not sure what you mean exactly. These, these numbers represent Turing machines. Right. 
So this is some Turing machine. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the one that accepts 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n. Okay. And this is the string 0. So if this Turing machine really is the one that accepts 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n, then there would be a 0 here. It doesn't accept 0. Right. And it doesn't accept 1. And it doesn't accept 1, 0. It wouldn't be up until like 1, 0, 1 until you'd actually get an acceptance there. Does that? Okay. That's okay. Does that help? that's correct then. Zero, you would have it. How do you know that it doesn't accept itself, though, if it's from the input string? Because you're looking at the diagonalization. How do I know what doesn't accept itself? You're saying a Turing machine doesn't accept itself. Some of them do, some of them don't. Right. Right. Um, I just run it on the encoding that represents it, and I see whether it accepts itself or not. But that encoding wouldn't necessarily be wouldn't in the up. same spot. OK, the encoding for the Turing machine 0, right, is some 10 character string. No, it's just 0. I re-encoded them. Teresa made her own encoding, and I relabeled them all. So now they have a new encoding in, in order, so I could just list them in order and not miss any. So, so let's say originally this was encoded with a number that was 36. Maybe these were the original encodings, 36, 42, 53, 98. So rather than list these and have to deal with all the gaps that might have appeared, I just say, well, let me take Teresa's encoding and redo it. So now that the one that was the smallest, I call zero. I just re-encoded them all. If you want to figure out which one it is, you can just go look it up. So how do you know? You just know. I mean, I just defined it that way. It's, zero is that Turing machine. I know, but in order to take string 36, you It's not string 36. This is string zero now. I understand that. That Turing machine's not 36 Scott, anymore. I think what Joe's trying to confirm is mm -hmm. that you're defining the input zero is now equivalent to your encoding for Turing machine zero. They're exactly the same. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ex that's, I think that's okay. Yeah. Well, Heather understands <laughs> the question completely. Yeah, so, if, yes, they're exactly the same. This Turing machine looks like a 0, and it's looking at a 0. This Turing machine looks like a 1, and it's looking at a 1. Yeah, they're the same. They're exactly the same. OK. So we go through this procedure. We got this whole stuff written out. And just like before, we have this strange set that can exist, and I'll write it out. Here's a set that can't possibly exist. Ironclad logic can't possibly exist, assuming I can make this table. It's the set of all Turing machines that do not accept themselves. You cannot find this language in this list. It doesn't exist anywhere. If it did exist, it would contradict the diagonal entry. So it doesn't exist. Time, time to move out of town. No, no, we're staying in town this time. Right, there's no more towns to go to. That's the thing. That when you're at the Turing machine level, you can't go out of town. If you go out of town, you know, you, you hit the border. Go back in town. It's like the twilight zone. You know, you leave the, you, you look around, you're still in the same town. You go out of the town, you're still there. I mean, that's... Can't someone discover a new town eventually? Hmm. I guess they, there is this idea of an oracle. Mm. Mm. Right. Well, here's the thing. You see this machine that can't possibly exist? You all agree it can't possibly exist? Mm -hmm. All right. Assuming that we could make this chart. Remember we assumed that this existed? This funny assumption. I'm going to convince you now that, I mean, we haven't gotten any contradiction. So what if this doesn't exist? You all agree this doesn't exist. Fine. How does that relate to my assumption that I made? I'm going to show you that the fact that this doesn't exist is in direct contradiction to this assumption. And that means this assumption is bogus. This assumption means I can give you guys an M and an X. You can go home to your halting algorithm and tell me whether M accepts X. You'll answer yes or no to this question. You did. You let me do this, right? If you can do this, I can tell you to go into your program, and every place it says yes, change that to a no. And every place it says print no, change that to a yes. OK? 
You can all do that. You can go home and do it. Change the algorithm. 